Hello, welcome to this tutorial on grade level student tech use expectations and teacher practices. This is based on Common Core Standards and Michigan Educational Technology Standards for Students, otherwise known as METS-S. This tutorial is going to focus on interactive collaborative writing and projects using digital tools. If you go through the Common Core, this is one of the main themes um, throughout the standards uh, that call specifically for technology. And this tutorial will focus on the K2 grade band. So if you look at kindergarten, the expectation is that these kindergartens will use digital tools to produce and publish writing, convey or illustrate ideas, including in collaboration with peers. And the little key point there is with adult help. So they're not expected to do this on their own. Um, you as a teacher would definitely be helping them do that. And the standard is the same for first grade um, and in second grade. So all with adult help. Basically, you want them to produce projects, mainly writing, and convey or illustrate their ideas and have some kind of collaboration involved. So one way that I think is easy to do that is to create a Google Slides presentation and have students create their own slide. That way they can all get in there together, have a, their own space, and then be able to look at each other's work and provide feedback for that collaborative element. So if you go to your Google Drive, drive.google.com, and you're signed into your account, click Create and Presentation, it will bring up a new slide. I'm just going to go with Simple Light because it's easy and give mine a title. So Digital Presentation, let's call this. And before I even get started editing, you're going to want to make this available to your students. So if you go to who has access and change it to anyone, <coughs> excuse me, anyone with a link and change this to edit, that way all the students when they get into your um, slides show will be able to edit it. So I'm going to save that down here and now I can just make a slide for each student. So if I make my title slide, I'm just going to put in some stuff, add some stuff. Then I can create a new slide and I want to make one for 30 different students. So they're all my kindergartners, first graders, or second graders. So I'm going to say uh, just copy, hit control C, and then control V. And then hit control V for however many students I have. So let's say I have 27 students, and I can scroll up. <coughs> and for each one, I can just put the name of my student. So um, I'll put Jamal there, and then um, Jade here and so on and so forth. Then when students get into their slide or to, into this link, then you can direct them to the slide with their name on it. Um, granted, they can all edit each other's stuff, so I recommend modeling what they should be doing um, and how it is not okay to type on somebody else's <coughs> work. And hopefully they will listen to that. So they can just click on their slide and start typing. Um, and if you want them to include other elements such as images or shapes, um, you can look at the insert and choose image. If you do that, then they could choose an image from their um, computer. If they have a webcam on their computer, you can choose take a snapshot, allow it, and then it will activate the camera if there's one detected. Another easy way to add pictures for students is if you go to Tools and Research. It opens up this research bar. You can have them select images. So let's say I wanted to add a dog. 
I type in dog and it brings up all of these nice cute puppies. I say, oh, I want to go with this one. He's cute. I can just drag him over onto the slide. I start and recording. Then I that the bug image shows cool up. Today. It's tagged to the source and I can stretch it or move it where I want to. So it's definitely something you have to model with students, but something I think even kindergartners, first graders could handle with the appropriate guidance. Um, but if you're just doing writing and that's all you want them to do, then this is where they can um, add that. Then when it comes time to collaborating, you can invite anybody in and there's a couple of different ways you can have them give their comments. You could have them verbally give them comments, that's still collaborating. Um, or you could have them type their comments on here in a different color. So if you wanted to have them change the text color, you can just go up to here, the A text color, and they could type in comments that way. Or maybe the best way would be to click this comment button. That way it's not affecting their slide. You can say, I like your spelling or whatever they're going to say and there's that feedback and they could go in and change that um, very easily now you're probably not going to be able to get kids to type this big long um, web address so if you want to share this with them there's a few different ways you could do that um, one is to copy this so if you highlight the whole thing and copy it. You can go to a URL shortener like bitly.com and then you can just paste your link right here and then it creates a shortened link for you. So if you copy that then you paste that link that's pretty small. So I'm going to increase the size of it So if you paste that link somewhere or post it in your classroom, then students only have to type in the bit.ly slash 11cvix5, and these would be capitals. That's a lot easier than having them type in um, something longer. There are other ways you could share it too. You could put a link on their computer, uh, but if there are public computers, that would be tougher for them to access that. So that is one way for you to address the collaborative writing um, and have everything in one place. Then when you're finished with this in your class, you could share it out in a variety of different ways. As a slideshow, you could share it with parents um, and have a celebration of the work that was done. And it could be a pretty cool project. So hopefully you can make that happen. Thanks for listening.